In this lecture we will introduce the underlying and basic concepts behind geographic information systems and spatial analysis. We will start with the GIS data model and common sources of data for geographic information systems. Next we will talk about the types of spatial problems that can be solved in GIS and the main steps of spatial analysis. Finally we introduce the basic concepts behind vector and raster map overlay functions. It is estimated that over 90% of all data being collected can be geographically referenced. Data such as real objects but also processes such as migration and events such as earthquakes. A meteorological or weather station collecting observations on temperature, relative humidity, precipitation, wind speed, and direction, visibility, atmospheric pressure are an example of data that can be precisely located in space and used for geospatial modeling such as interpolation. Geospatial data model is a set of constructs for representing objects and processes in the digital environment of the computer. The spatial data are organized as thematic layers, and each layer represents a single class of features such as streets, parcels, administrative boundaries, vegetation cover or elevation. When combined these layers make the digital representation of part of the real world that we model in GIS. When representing the real world in GIS or in other words in a computer, it is better to think in terms of different levels of generalization or abstraction. At the top level, we have reality, which is made of real-world phenomena and objects, these may include all aspects that may be deemed relevant to a particular project or application. Second, the conceptual model is a partially structured model of selected processes and objects. It concludes with conceptual description of the types of objects and relationships between them. At this level of abstraction we deal with the discrete object and the continuous field data models. Third, the logical model is an implementation independent representation of reality. At this stage diagrams and lists describing the names and behavior as well as interactions between objects are developed. Finally, the physical model is the actual implementation in GIS and comprises of vector and raster type files and databases. In other words, physical model describes the exact files or databases used to store the data and the relationships between objects. Thus, Selected data model provides reference point for users and developers. A data model controls the types of objects a geographic information system can handle and the operations that can be performed on them. This figure shows two representations of the same area using the two fundamental approaches. Conceptual, discrete object and continuous field data models and the corresponding logical vector and raster logical models. In a raster representation space is divided into an array of rectangular cells, usually squares. These cells are also called pixels. Geographic data is expressed in a raster by assigning values, properties, or attributes to these cells. In the presented example each color represent a different value of a nominal scale variable denoting land use class. In this case the data are coming from the European Corine Land Cover Program. The raster space is determined by the number of rows and columns in the array and by the size of cell. Location of each cell in a coordinate system space is determined based on these known values and by the coordinates of the reference cell, usually lower or upper left corner. In addition, when information is presented in a raster form, the detail about its variation within a cell is lost, that is a cell is given a single value. The rule used to ascend this value is often based on the largest share of the cell's area or on the central point of this cell. On the other hand, in vector representation, 
objects are represented by coordinate-based points, lines, and polygons. Points are located by a single set of coordinates, linear features are captured as points, also known as nodes, connected by straight lines. Whereas, to capture an area in vector form we need to specify locations of points that form vertices of polygon. Vector type features usually have additional information associated with them called descriptive attributes. For example a polyline representing a river may have attributes such as the river's name or order. An example of vector data is a GUEO database of topographical objects. The database ID administered by a public body, geodesy, and cartography administration, under the Infrastructure for Spatial Information. Specific application schema that defines features, geometry, attributes. XML schema of the database structure. In a geographic information system, we may also work with CAD data from computer-aided design systems used primarily in architecture, engineering, and construction. A CAD system may be supplemented by a database and cartographic capabilities. However, usually does not store topological information. Topologies are rules describing the adjacency and connectivity between vector features that enable spatial queries and analyses. For example finding object bordering other features or objects enclosed by other features. The choice between raster and vector data format is often complex and may be influenced by issues such as data volume, sources of data, applications, available software, and required resolution. We must be aware that geographic reality is generally infinitely complex and computer representation of reality is finite. Therefore, the data model selected influences the method of analysis that can be done. Also, there is no single type of data model that is universal, as GIs are used for different purposes and by different people and organizations. As it was mentioned at the beginning about 90% of data can be spatially referenced. Data collection is one of the most time-consuming and expensive tasks in geographic information system. According to literature, data collection can cost up to 85% to total GI's costs. The sources of data are diverse, some have been pictured in this slide, and there are many methods to enter data into a GUEO database. Two main methods of data collection are data capture and data transfer. It is useful to distinguish between primary data and secondary data sources. The primary spatial data are captured by direct measurement intended specifically for use in geographic information system. Whereas, secondary data sources are reused from other projects or systems. Typical examples of primary data sources include raster satellite images and vector construction surveying measurements using GNSSS or Total Station. Typical secondary sources include scanned paper maps, mining plans or photography. Both primary and secondary geographic data may be obtained in analog or digital format. A classification of geographic data in terms of data collection purposes is shown on this slide. An increasing volume of spatial data for GIs is collected through sensors connected to the Internet and measuring continuously or at preset interval various activities or processes in real or near real time. Examples include sensors monitoring mine equipment and infrastructure such as conveyor belt systems or deformation monitoring networks. This provides new and promising information with the capabilities provided by the Internet of Things and Big Data Geospatial Analytics. Based on the information presented so far we can now try to define what are geographic information systems. We may for example think of GIs as a software installed on a desktop computer that we use to solve a given spatial problem, for example identifying optimal location for an activity. However, 
the appropriate way is to think of geographic information system in a broader sense as an integrated set of computer hardware, software, data, research methods, and specialists, all of which operate in an institutional context. As it was mentioned GIs is an environment that can help us solve various problems that are related to space. Depending on the type of the problem that we seek to solve and the complexity of the methodology used to find the solution, we can classify spatial problems into, finding specific location, determining given conditions, analyzing trends, observing patterns, and finally trying to model a process in space and in time. For example location-based problems may concern finding the nearest quarry producing crushed granite rocks. The second type of spatial problems concern finding areas that meet all of the selected criteria that determine the most suitable location for an investment such as new power plant, waste treatment plant, highway etc. The criteria may include for example maximum slope, minimum area required, distance to road or river. If we have observations that span a certain period, we can try to identify and analyze trends that occur in a given space over time. For example, population growth, bird migration, glacier retreat, annual temperature change, house price fluctuations, mine subsidence, or air pollution and many other processes and phenomena that can be related to geographical space. We can also use geographic information system analytical capabilities to identify patterns that can exist in data. For example we can try to look for variables that will explain the character of subsidence occurring on the ground above underground mining operation. The potential variables that we can test may include depth of mining, thickness and inclination of the mineral deposits, mining system used, hydrogeological conditions and many other. The same approach can be applied to analyze seismicity induced by mining or large man-made water reservoirs, susceptibility to landslides or avalanches. Finally, we can use GIs to model and predict certain phenomena or activities. For example we can model traffic in a passenger public transport network and its change when a new shopping mall is opened in a town or predict subsidence over mining operation with spatial statistics by constructing a model relating subsidence treated as dependent variable to explanatory variables. Every spatial analysis that we perform consists of several stages. At the beginning we define the problem that we want to solve then we look for the necessary geospatial data. For example, in an optimal location problem the data represent criteria that need to be fulfilled, such as proximity to train station or proximity to market when we look for a new house. Once we have the data and we have verified the data we have to choose the appropriate analytical approach. Then, we perform the analysis and examine the results. The actual analysis can be preformed on a pilot area area and if the method performs correctly it is repeated for the entire data set. In the last part we analyze and interpret the results, visually and statistically. Based on the result we can make the decision and share the results. A very common use of GIs is for site or location analysis. This concept was proposed by Mr. Ian McHarg. It is based on overlying maps representing criteria of analysis. In the example provided by McHarg, the criteria represented areas of ecological, environmental, and other values and when combined produced a map of ecophysiographical obstructions for construction of a new road. Map overlay analysis can be performed either using a vector data or raster data approach. In the vector data 1, we overlay vector feature classes and depending on the type of function used we obtain different results. For example in this slide the intersect function produces the geometric intersection of two input feature classes. The features, or their portions that are spatially congruent in all inputs, that is, they intersect, will be stored in the output feature class. 
whereas, the union function produces a vector feature class that will contain features, here polygons, representing the geometric union of all the inputs, as well as all the attribute fields from the input feature classes. The common vector map overlay functions available in GI's software packages include, intersect, union, clip, symmetrical difference, erase, identify and cover functions. Their products are shown schematically in this figure. For example, the symmetrical difference function will produce a vector feature class that contains features or portions of features that belong to either of two input vector feature classes but not to two of them simultaneously. Another example of vector map overlay function is the spatial join operation. This operation joins attributes from one feature to another based on the spatial relationship. The target features and the joined attributes from the join features are written to the output feature class. For example we can use this function to calculate the number of mines in a given administration unit based on their spatial relationship as shown in this figure or we can calculate the total population of all towns in an administration unit using the sum statistic when joining the feature classes. The raster map overlay approach is based on map algebra concept. Map algebra has been proposed by Dr. Dana Tomlin. In essence it is a set of simple operations in a geographic information system, which allow two or more raster layers to produce a new raster layer using algebraic operations such as addition, subtraction, division, and so on. Thus, the map algebra syntax comprises of objects usually raster data and axio performed on a raster or between two or more rasters. Different types of operations can be used. Arithmetic operations that is basic mathematical functions like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Statistical operations such as minimum, maximum, average or median. Relational operations comparing cells using functions such as greater than, smaller than, or equal to. Trigonometric operations, as well as exponential and logarithmic that use exponent and logarithm functions. In the example addition operation on two raster datasets is presented. Depending on the spatial neighborhood of raster cell, for which the new value is calculated, Map algebra functions can be categorized into the following classes, local, focal, global, and zonal. Local operations work on individual raster cells, or pixels. Focal operations work on cells and their neighbors, whereas global operations work on the entire layer. Finally, zonal operations work on areas of cells that share the same value. In the example we use a logical operation to determine permeable grounds used for agricultural purposes that may lead to contamination of underground water with pesticides. In this lecture we have learned the basic concepts of geographic information systems including what are spatial data, what are the common GUEO data models, what data sources are available, what we can use GIs for and how to solve common problems with GI's analytical functionality. More advanced concepts will be presented in the next lectures. Thank you for your attention. You will find detailed explanations of the topics presented in this lecture in the textbooks shown in this slide.